What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back because I've come to the conclusion that a C6 Corvette is better than a 2008 Aston Martin Vantage V8 Roadster. Two very similar cars, but totally different experiences. I'm going to start off by saying that the Aston Martin is a wonderful car. It's a fun car. I really enjoy it. But there's a couple things about it that I just really don't like. It is a powerful little car. It's around 380 horsepower. This has the sport shift transmission, so it's a manual with automated shift, sort of. But you get the flappy paddles, so that's really nice. It is a relatively quick car. I wouldn't call it fast, but it's decent. The main thing about something like this is that when you put this next to a Corvette, I don't think there's really any question about which car looks better. Which car is more aesthetically pleasing? The Aston Martin wins all day long. The car is sick. The design is wonderful. It's a beautiful car. But I've been getting a lot of people saying that the Corvette is actually not as good as the Aston Martin because the Aston Martin is, ba is made with better materials. I think that is a myth. And I want to kind of put that to rest today. Let me explain why I don't think this car is made better than this one. And it all comes down to the quality of the materials. And I've had so many people telling me this car has real leather. It's not that fake stuff that the Corvette uses, right? The real leather dashboard. And you're right. Real leather, real stitching. This is all very real, but there's a problem with using real leather on things. This car has just shy of 62,000 miles on the odometer. This car right here has almost 300,000 miles on its odometer. I'm going to show you something. Look at this. 62,000 miles. You've got carpet separating from the sides here, right? There's some bubbling. I don't know how well it comes out on camera. But you can see where the leather, you see me pushing on that? The leather is actually lifting. It's becoming delaminated from the mating surface underneath. The dashboard, while yes, is made of full leather and real wood, there's some negatives to that. You can see the wood is actually cracking from age. And up here, do you see all those stripes? That is bonding material. That is adhesive. There used to be leather up here. Well, it delaminated and it started curling, so somebody pulled the leather off, which honestly probably makes it look a lot better. You also have this electronic screen here that, as you can see, kind of, it kind of coming apart, which is fine because honestly the screen sucks. Nobody uses them. But yeah, there's that aspect as well. Again, this car only has 62,000 miles. Here's another interesting thing about this car, and I'm not gonna just sit here and rag on the car all day, absolutely not. It is a beautiful car, and it is so fun to drive, but the main thing about the car is it just gets attention. When you set it next to a Corvette, there is absolutely no comparison. Nobody is going to want to look at a Corvette when you have an Aston Martin sitting next to it. In fact, I would be willing to say very few people are all that interested in looking at a Corvette, even if there's not an Aston Martin sitting next to it. It's just one of those things. I think the Corvette is a beautiful car, and I've always loved the Corvette. I think most of you know that by now. But at the end of the day, it's 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 just a Chevy. It's just a Corvette. This, well, even though I may not agree with it, this is considered an exotic car by everybody except me, I think. I, I don't see it. It's got a 4.3 liter Jaguar derived V8 engine. This car, in my opinion, is not an exotic. And I challenge you to change my mind in the comment section below. Now, 380 horsepower from a 4.3 liter engine compared to 400 horsepower from an LS2 6.0 liter engine. This is a very capable little car and it has such a unique sound. I'm gonna fire it up for you real quick. This, I will give to it. This engine sounds like an exotic. You fire up the Corvette, it sounds like any other Chevy with a six liter. When you fire up the Aston, it kind of demands attention. 
you can't mistake the sound. It definitely sounds like an exotic car. The reason I don't really consider it an exotic is because it's nothing more than a hodgepodge of parts bin stuff. Like you've got Ford, you've got Aston Martin, you've got Volvo, you've got Jaguar. It, if everything in here was made by Aston, then maybe. And that'll bring me to my next set of issues with this car as well, but we'll go ahead and give her a quick start. Like I said, you really can't mistake the sound of this car. She's a good sounding car. But again, it's just a bunch of parts from other manufacturers that have been thrown together to make this an exotic car. I'm sorry guys, but to me, it's look at this the the key itself is a volvo key all right the key fob it says volvo right on the back of it right that's a volvo key fob with that said she runs and drives she scoots down the road just fine it's a low mileage car it doesn't leak anything it's a great car and i paid twenty four thousand dollars for it so i i feel like i stole this car 24 grand is super cheap i've looked around on auto trader and cars.com and other websites and i see these things retail going for around 40 in about the same condition now this car is not a not a garage queen it's been driven it's got 62,000 miles on it but it's still in relatively good shape and i'm sure she's going to clean up nice now let's talk about the corvette that i got from Sam Crack. So my Aston Martin Vantage is a 2008 and my Corvette here is a 2007. They're very similar cars. The Corvette is a little bit bigger, a little bit lower to the ground, a little bit wider, a little bit longer. But this car I paid $10,000 for. This is a 3LT with the Z51 package. Both are Roadsters, both, okay, they're not automatics. This is an automatic. That's an automated manual. Totally different things, but uh, I digress. This car, in my opinion, is a better deal, a far better deal, because of how cheap it is to purchase and how cheap it is to maintain. Now, I have no doubt that this video is gonna get some people riled up and upset in the comment section, and that's fine. It's important to understand that this is my first exotic car. I've never had one before, and I'm not talking trash on it. My, my goal here is not to tell you how awful the car is. It is, guys, I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that I would have something like this, okay? I don't come from money. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon or anything like that. The fact that this is sitting here right now is beyond me. So I'm not here to tell you that the car is horrible, that the car is junk. It's not. It's a great car for what it is. I'm just telling you, somebody that came from uh, limited means, something like this just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But something like this does. $24,000 and you will be hard pressed to find one with a clean title that runs and drives any cheaper. The only warning light on the dash on this car is the TPMS light. It just needs some TPMS sensors. So I stole this car for what I got it for. But in comparison, $10,000 for this, is this car gonna still be on the road when it has 260,000 miles like this one? Or will this car long be parted out and broken down? I don't know. I don't see any 260,000 mile Vantages for sale. With that said, the Corvette is made of cheap materials, right? It's all plastic and fiberglass and it's junk. Well, guys, I'm pretty sure the convertible top is still the original. And although it may not look the best, this top doesn't leak. This car sat out here in the snow. We had eight inches of snow on top of this car and it's absolutely dry. The Aston Martin, however, I kept in the garage because I was afraid that the 60,000 mile top might leak. 
As far as the interior goes, it's important to say that the bolster here was torn, but Sam Crack replaced this bolster um, with a new cover. He put a new cover over it. As far as talking trash about GM and their plastic components, I'll be the first to admit I've, I've never been a big fan of all their plastics. With that said though, 300,000 miles, almost, and this is not bad. This is held up very well, especially the high traffic areas, you know, getting in and out, your feet coming across this, the dashboard from sitting outside. Center console, yeah, it's, you know, it, it needs a new one, and it needs some of these sun visors. But aside from that, this car has held up very, very well. Since we're already in here, we might as well give it a start. It's nothing impressive because it doesn't have a fancy exhaust, but no fob detected. Great. Did I drop? I dropped the fob somewhere. <laughs> I lost it. This also has push to start, but you don't have to put the key. In fact, there's nowhere to put the key in the ignition. The Aston Martin, you have to. No fobs detected. Come on, man, quit screwing around. Let's try this again. I had to go get a different key fob. There we go. I guess the battery in the other one has gone dead. Let's see if she'll fire up now. Bingo. All right. Now to make things fair, we should probably go ahead and put the top down. This one, you gotta open it with that, and then you push this button. And look at that, 300,000 miles almost, and the convertible top still works, and it's freezing cold outside. Listen, number one, it's freezing outside, and you really shouldn't be operating your convertible top when it's this cold. Number two, it wasn't actually the car's fault. It was my own. I had been in the trunk and I guess the partition that has to be in place partially came off. So what I had to do is I had to reach my hand in there and I had to grab the cardboard partition and pull it back onto its little clip. And there's anyway, not the car's fault, user error. And again, 300,000 miles. So, as I was saying before, yes, GM uses crappy plastic interiors. This is all fake leather. It's mostly plastic and plastic and plastic, but it held up really, really well over the 260,000 miles that the car currently has on it. I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty impressed with the old girl. Oh yeah, the hood latch is broken. I forgot about that. So you have to open the hood in an unconventional manner you gotta reach in and find these things and pull them and then your watch gets stuck and you scratch it up. That's fine though. It's a theft deterrent in my opinion. People don't realize how to get in here so they can't pop your hood and try to steal your, your car. There we go. See? And under the hood is this beautiful 260,000 mile Corvette LS2 engine with about 400 horsepower. A car does zero to 60 and, well, hell, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's something like 4.3. Not exceptionally fast by today's standards, but keep in mind, the car is a 2007. She's, she's a little old, but I don't know. In my opinion, zero to 60 and 4.3 is still relatively quick. You've got drilled rotors. You've got big brakes. Of course, the Aston Martin has slotted rotors and big brakes. They're both beautiful cars, guys. I'm not here to say that the Aston Martin is a horrible car and that the Corvette is far superior. What I am saying is that I believe when you compare the cars, the Corvette is a better built car. That is just my opinion and I challenge you to change my mind in the comment section below. And the main reasons for the way, the way I feel is, this car, although it seems to be cheaply made, has really stood the test of time. Whereas this very expensive car, 
parts are hard to get for it. And even when you find them secondhand on eBay, parts are very, very expensive. Sam Crack told me the other day, a buddy of his went to the dealer because his convertible top had stopped working. They wanted to charge him $35,000 to fix his top. Guys, I bought the whole car for $24,000. That makes absolutely no sense to me at all. If you're gonna own one of these cars, I highly recommend you have very deep pockets and very long arms to reach down there and pull out all the money it's gonna to take to keep this thing in the same kind of condition as this. So let me tell you right now, if this car blows up, if the transmission goes out, I can go on eBay Motors right now and I can get a transmission for $1,100, $1,200 for an 80,000 mile trans. Rear differential, I don't know, maybe another $800,000. LS2 engine on the other hand, that's a little more expensive, but still cheaper than if it was a 2008 with an LS3. This engine, you can probably get used for about $2,500, $2,800. You know how much an engine goes for in this car? You wanna know how much a transmission goes for? Guys, I have found used transmissions for this that are basically cores that are going for $3,000 on eBay. The little shifter mechanism that sits on top of the transmission on this, that is over $2,000 used just for this little mechanism that sits on top of the transmission. Now, I know what you're gonna say. There's an entire world of difference between these two cars. A Corvette should not be compared to an Aston Martin and vice versa, and I agree with you. This car is in a class of its own, and a Corvette is just a Corvette, but seriously, I want you to take a minute Quit thinking about Fast and Furious. Quit thinking about the video games that you used to play as a kid, okay? If you take that out of the equation and just look at these two cars, which one do you honestly think is the better deal? I know this car looks better and it gets more attention. This is just a plain Jane Corvette. But at the end of the day, $10,000 versus $24,000. The cost of maintenance, upkeep, repairs, etc., etc., are astronomical on this car. This is still a great looking car. It's fun to drive. It'll beat the Aston Martin in a race, hands down, all day, every day. So, in my opinion, this is the winner. This is the better car. Now, I would love to take these things out for a ride, but uh, I don't know if you see what the roads look like out here. Um, it's nothing but mud out here, guys, and I can't do that. Uh, I, this was my plan. Today, I mean, I'm making this video at 10.56 in the morning on Thursday, January the 26th. All right, so you're getting the video literally right after I recorded it. I had planned on taking you out on a drive and really getting you to hear the exhaust sounds from this. This car, there really is no exhaust sound. This car just screams going down the road. This car is just kind of quiet. I'm trying to work with Borla to hopefully change that. I've got a few uh, a few sponsorship opportunities that I'm working on with this car. With that said, I've got a few parts for this car coming. This one really doesn't need anything. This one runs and drives just fine. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it for because it spends all of its time sitting oh, right here in this garage. It, it doesn't move. Um, I don't like taking it out. I don't really like driving it because, as you can see, I live on a horrible street. The Corvette doesn't bother me at all. Like, as a car that you could daily drive and not worry about tearing up, this one's perfect, man. This one is absolutely perfect. Neither one of these cars are leaking any fluids. It's not leaving any stains on my driveway or anything. So, yeah, it is what it is. But I've got some new parts for this, including the new turn signal switch. I've got new headlights, uh, Sylvania. Um, HID headlights. I've got new ballasts for both and I've got the new wiring kit for both headlights as well. So we'll be coming back in another video and doing all of that. And hopefully we'll have our headlights and our switch working to where when we turn the right turn signal on it does not decide to turn the brights on. Guys, I don't know what your thoughts are but I'm hoping that you're willing to drop a comment down below and tell me what you think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Aston Martin is the better car and somehow I'm just not understanding it. I <laughs> I don't know, man. She's been sitting here running this whole time. There it is. 
I mean, it's a good running car. Temperature stays nice. It's quiet until you hit the gas and then it gets really loud really fast. It's a fun car. But in my opinion, the Corvette is a more fun car for a much better price. Now, I really wanted to do some stuff to this car, man. I wanted to send it in for a fresh paint job and I wanted to upgrade the headlights and the taillights and the exhaust and replace the convertible top. There's a lot. The more I think about it and the more Sam tells me he forbids me to spend money on this car, the more, the more I think, yeah, may, maybe he's right. Maybe I shouldn't go spending a bunch of money on this car. The idea is though, is let's take a cheap old $10,000 Corvette and let's refresh it and let's see how good we can make it, how good it can sound and modernize it a little bit with some fresh lights and stuff. Uh, Sam says it's just not worth it and I'm inclined to agree with him. It's a cheap Corvette and at the end of the day, what will we have? If I were to spend $5,000 for everything that the car needs to bring it back to its former glory, I would have a $15,000 Corvette with almost 300,000 miles on it that would be worth, what, 10 grand? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. However, next to me, I got $24,000 into the Aston Martin that hopefully wholesale on the cheap side, I figure I should be able to get 30 grand out of this car. And by the way, if you're a dealer or you know a dealer and you're interested in this car for 30 grand, like I said, these things retail pretty, but not high, but for what they are, pretty decent, $40,000. So yeah, there's some money left on the table there. So I'm gonna be looking to get about 30 out of this car. Now, drop your comments below. Tell me what you guys think. I'm going to get out of here because I've got to go meet a YouTuber down at AR headquarters. I just wanted to share my opinion with you guys and I don't know. I don't know. I Every time I stand next to these cars, I, I, I go back and forth with myself about which one is the better car. I think it's the Corvette, but it's just the looks, the aesthetics of an Aston Martin. You. I, I guess that's where the extra money comes from, is just being able to say, hey, I drive an Aston Martin. I own an Aston Martin versus I drive or I own a Corvette. You're gonna get way more attention in that car than you're gonna get in that one. Now, usually when I do videos like this where I'm comparing one car to another, I get a lot of hate in the comment section. It gets a lot of people angry. I ruffle a lot of feathers. I, I really don't know why. People think that I, oh, you lean towards this car because of one reason or Listen, there, I have no skin in the game. Honestly, I have nothing to lose by telling you which car I think is the better deal because I own both of them. Literally, I've got a Corvette and an Aston Martin side by side. So why would I pick one car over the other unless I genuinely felt like that was the better car? I have nothing to lose, but I figured I'd share my experience with you because maybe you're thinking about buying a Corvette. Maybe you're looking at a C6. Maybe you're looking at an Aston Martin. Honestly though, I seriously doubt anybody for real is trying to decide between an Aston Martin and a Corvette. But if you are, <laughs> the rare case that maybe you are one of those people, in my opinion, you're better off just getting a Corvette. I think it's gonna give you a more reliable and a more re enjoyable experience. And it's gonna save your pocketbook a ton of money. Drop your comments below, tell me what you think. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.